Hello, and welcome to Your Daily Five with Erin Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com. Let's get right on into it. Before I start, though, I did want to let everybody know I do a free training room on Mondays at noon Eastern time. All you have to do is go to decisionpoint.com, sign up for our free newsletter, and you will get all of the information you need, as well as a link that looks just like this that you can click on and get yourself registered. All right, we're going to start off with the five month candlestick chart of the spy. What's going to happen this week, at least what we expect? What does it look like right now? All right, so what we can see is currently we are in a rising wedge. This is a bearish pattern. The expectation is a breakdown below the pattern. But as you can see, it really has managed to find support along this rising bottoms trend line rather than a breakdown as would normally be expected. However, today's trading has opened up in a very interesting way. We are currently down, at least as I was recording this, almost 0.6% for the SPY. When I look at this chart, the two things that bother me, first of all, the PMO is looking like it wants to give me a crossover sell signal. Of course, it's been very, very flat, so I've kind of had to ignore some of the buy and sell signals that have come in here. When the PMO is flat, that just means that you have an acceleration that is at zero. You're not accelerating, you're not decelerating. And so that's exactly what has been happening. But today's action with this decline is certainly going to pull that PMO down. We'll probably have a sell signal. I was feeling a little bit um, bullish, believe it or not, going into this week. There were a few signs that said that we might have, uh, you know, we might have a good week and it, we still could. Um, but one of them was the fact that the OBV, which had had a negative divergence with price on the SPY, is now not showing that negative divergence anymore. And in fact, if you really want to look at it, we have a confirmation with rising bottoms on the OBV and rising bottoms on price. But it does look like we're going to pull back at least to this 20-day EMA before this week is done. If we keep this sort of bearish um, environment that we're in, which could be the case if you look at a VIX right now, this is inverted. So the lower readings are on top, higher on the bottom. And as you can see, uh, investors this morning, really nervous. We are still seeing the VIX above its EMA. So we might be able to recover from this decline that obviously is taking people uh, out of the market or making them very nervous. We'll have to see how that plays out, but I would be expecting at least a test of this 20-day EMA. But back to why I was thinking a, a little bit more in a bullish frame of mind. When I looked at our Swedland trading oscillators, you know, we were seeing the negative divergence going on here with price, but then we had a nice pop at the end of the week. And Friday, we did see a pullback just a little, the Swinland trading oscillator, and it is somewhat overbought. But just seeing the fact that we were losing some of this uh, declining trend on the Swinland trading oscillators, kind of losing that short term negative divergence, you know, I think things were looking a little bit better. But now I have to say, and it is only a half a day of trading, if that, but we are seeing that pullback right now on those Swenland trading oscillators. I'll have to see what it looks like tonight. But this was another reason I was uh, thinking in more of a bullish frame of mind. And that was the fact that we were seeing this rising trend coming out of oversold readings at the last market bottom. And we were seeing price, uh, the stocks participating because we had stocks above their 20 day EMA sort of rising on this rising trend having come out of oversold territory. You can see very similarly with the PMOs rising. We had more than two thirds of the SPY, the S&P uh, 500 with stocks above their 20, and we had 63% with rising momentum. And you can see at the end of Friday, that was just starting to tick up and settle in with this rising bottoms here on percent PMOs rising. That just means that the stock, 63% of them have rising momentum. They have a PMO that's turning up. So, you know, things were looking a little bit better by the end of last week, but now that we're seeing these declines coming in on those STOs, 
You know, it's going to look a little different this week. But I had to come in with some stocks to consider. I noticed most people on your daily five come in with just five stock symbols. Of course, I'm well known for my overall market uh, views for my DP alert. And so I do like to give you kind of the context before I walk in and show you stocks. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. But I did bring three for you to consider that going into this week. And they all sort of have a theme. And the first two are actually from the um, building materials area of the market. And, you know, that has been uh, starting to heat up a little bit here because of the infrastructure bill that was passed. So we want to keep an eye on this area of the market. And you can see the reason I picked this one. First of all, we have that 20 50 day EMA positive crossover. At decision point, we call that a silver cross. And so we had that intermediate term trend model buy signal. We had this beautiful breakout here for Fortune Brands. You can see the PMO buy signal came in definitely a little bit earlier uh, at late, in late July, but now we're seeing that PMO getting above the zero line. And that's what really is important to me you know, on top of having a crossover buy signal. But you can see that the OBV is starting to rise here, which is good. And I really do like that um, rounded, that rounded saucer bottom there on prices and the breakout, which could, if you look in this thumbnail, be a full flag formation. So I'm expecting price to continue higher. But as with my decision point diamonds, I always wanna show you a stop level. And in this case, you know, you could actually have a very tight stop up at this 50 day EMA if you wanted, uh, or at this area of support. But if you wanna give it a little bit more leash, then you could go down and even at a 5.8% stop, that's still pretty reasonable. So I like this one, Fortune Brands, Home and Security. The next one is Masco. And of course, this is a large cap that I think a lot of people are familiar with. Again, PMO buy signal. We have a positive RSI. You can see that the uh, area of building materials, that group is showing relative strength against the S&P. And so that's something we wanna see. And then if we're looking for a stock within that group, I wanna see that it is outperforming. And you can see that in the last week, it really did start to outperform its group as well as outperforming the S&P. So I think Masco looks pretty good. And my final stock that I'm bringing to you is Toll Brothers from Home Construction. I've been looking at home construction for quite some time. And you know I think that it's really shaped up nicely. You can probably look at some of those other home construction stocks and maybe find one that you like better. But I think this one really is uh, set up beautifully. And why is that? Well, first of all, I have this beautiful reverse head and shoulders pattern. And you can see the price did get a, above the neckline. And that means that we should expect to move about the height of this pattern, which is about, hmm, let's see, three handles, as we like to call them. So that would put you right up here, right at that previous all-time, all time, I think it's an all-time high. Uh, we'll put it at that level right there. You can see where it closed in early May at that top. I mean, if you did the calculation, it's, it's pretty much right there. So I would expect to move at least up to test this area of overhead resistance, given this bullish reverse head and shoulders. And of course, you know, we saw the price bounce off the 200. It came back down to form that right shoulder by bouncing off of the 20 and 50 day EMAs, as well as this area here of support. It's light support. It's only been touched twice. But even so, I think that that's a very good uh, sign that we're going to see Toll Brothers move even higher this week. And you can see as far as the home builders go, you can see that really nice relative strength picking up. And you can see that the relative strength amongst the group for Toll Brothers is rising. So we know we're getting a relatively strong performer, not only against the S&P here, but also against the industry group itself. So I think the Toll Brothers looks poised very nicely to move much higher. 
All right, that pretty much finishes up my daily five. Uh, you can find out more about me and my uh, blogs that I write at decisionpoint.com. And we are running a trial right now. If you want to try us out for a week, just use that coupon code DP trial at checkout and you will get to try both the DP alert and DP diamonds for one week without being charged. And that, my friends, is the end of your daily five. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.